Hello, everyone, and welcome again to Mother and Refuge of the End Times. I'm Ron Ray. Thank you so much, Father Celso, for joining us today to answer some of our questions. You've been on our show many times now, and we've had a lot of questions on our comments and people that are interested in finding out a bit more about the Divine Will. So we thought this time around um, we'll be asking some of the questions that our viewers have left to, to find out a bit more and um, just make some clarifications about what it means to to follow um, Louisa's writings and and the, the divine will in particular. So would you like to start off with the prayer, Father? Sure. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for pray us. For the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we'll get right into it, Father. Um, so okay. the questions, I've got around seven questions, but I just want to let our viewers know, hopefully in the future we can do some more Q&As. So if you do have any questions that you want to ask, please leave them in the comments, and we can do them for the, our next episode. The first question is this, Father. Um moment while I get it up. Okay, I only recently was hearing about the divine will, and I was wondering how it differ differs from doing God's will, which is divine. Your clarification will be appreciated. I'll leave it, I'll leave it to you. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah, the questions are, are very important. As a matter of fact, Jesus says to Louisa, every question, every question that you have about the divine will uh, is going to be answered, Jesus says. Uh, he's going to do this. Um, as you read, he's going to answer your questions. As you read this, Jesus will answer your questions. And it's really astonishing. Uh, you'll be reading and you're going, I just was wondering about that. Or I just asked that question yesterday. And, and the Lord answers the question. So uh, in volume 17, uh, uh, September 18th, 1924, the distance between living in the divine will and doing the will of God. Okay, so Jesus says there's a vast difference um, as from earth to heaven and heaven to earth of, of, of doing the divine will, which the saints have done, and living in the divine will, which Jesus taught Louisa. So she says, I was thinking over what had been written on living in the divine volition, and I prayed to Jesus, this is Louisa speaking, that he would give me more light to be able to clarify more of his blessed living in the divine will to those souls to whom I am obliged to do so. And my sweet Jesus told me, my daughter Louisa, unfortunately, they are slow in understanding it. See, the divine will is very simple, and, and we complicate it with our, with our minds. So he says, to live in my divine will is to reign in the divine will. Because that's where we start. To live in the divine will is to reign in the divine will. Now, God's going to explain this to Louisa. With it, while to do my divine will that the saints have done is being subjected, uh, submitted to my orders. Like when, when the saints were always doing the will of God, for the last 2,000 years, we've learned how to do the will of God. And now Jesus says, now is the time, this is the exterior life of Jesus doing the will of God. Now I want to show you how to live in the will, the divine will. That's the interior life of Jesus and Mary. So the first to live in my divine will is to possess the gift. It's yours. It becomes yours. The second to uh, do the divine will is to receive the dispositions and execute the commands of God. You, you, you're, you're docile. You say, yes, Lord. Uh, I'm going to obey your commands. Let me do what you say. That's what we've been doing for 2,000 years. We've been faithful and obedient to Christ and his church. Uh, we've been, uh, see, a Adam was unfaithful. Adam was disobedient. And so this obedience and faithfulness is essential to get back to where Adam was before the fall. So Jesus says, to live in my divine will is to make my divine will one's own, own's will, your own will, Okay. 
uh, right now, okay, he says this, he wants it to be your own property. He wants you uh, to dispose of this, to possess this. He says, to do my divine will is to take into account uh, as will of God, not as your own thing, nor can one dispose of, of the divine will as he wants. So uh, when we go to confession, we are confessing basically what our human will wants. This is what I thought. This is what I said. This is what I did. This is what I failed to do. And I don't want to live like this. I want to make a firm purpose of amendment to avoid these near occasions of sin. Our human will is very strong. We still go to confession. <laughs> no, nobody has that fullness yet of the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary. That's what the divine will is. So to live in my divine will is to make my divine will one's own, your own property. To do my divine will is to take into account as will of God, not as your own thing, but disposed to what God wants. So to live in my divine will is to live with one single will that is of God. See, there's not going to be, I'm going to do my, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do what I want. It's Lord, what do you want? Let me do as you ask. That's, that's our lady's life. When the angel said to the blessed mother, uh, you're going to be the mother of God. She says, how do I do this? <laughs> how can I, how can I accomplish what God wants for me? I've already decided uh, to live a, a, a virginal life and Joseph, a virginal life how are we going to have children? We, I'm not going to know man as, as, as normal because of the, the choice that I'm making. And the angel said, it will be through the power of the Holy Spirit. And she said, fiat me, let it be done to me as you say. So her, her question wasn't like Zechariah's question. When, when the angel said to Zechariah, you're going to be the father of a child. He goes, yeah, sure. Yeah, he mocked him. So the angel said, really? <laughs> you're going to be mute from this point on, until the child's born, basically. Our Lady was fiat. Our Lady was docile. Our Lady was submissive. That's what God is trying to teach us. Our human will is very strong. I mean, you go to confession each week, you make a firm purpose of amendment, and you're back in a confessional the next week. Why? <laughs> it's because, as, as Scripture says, you know, uh, the, the, will, the, 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 the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So Jesus says, to live in my divine will is to live with one single will, and that is of God. And since it is a will that's all holy, since it is a will that is all pure, since it is a will that is peace, all peaceful, but being one single will that reigns, there is no contrast between the person trying to live in the divine will and that of God. He says, everything is peace, Jesus says. Human passions tremble before the supreme will of God and would rather want to escape the supreme will of God. And that, that's why you're, what you're going to get to learn is how the demons, when they see that you're, 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 you're striving to live the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary, they flee from you. This is what you're going to experience and would rather escape it. Nor do they dare even to move or to oppose what is God asking in seeing that heaven and earth tremble before this holy divine will of God. Therefore, the first step of living in the divine will, which allows the creature to receive the divine order of God, the, this is what he breathed into Adam, is in the depth of the soul. And he says, where grace moves to empty of herself all that is human to enter into the divine. This is what the priest says every day at Holy Mass, putting the drop of water into the chalice. May we share in the divinity of Christ as Christ humbled himself to share in our humanity. That prayer is happening. It's, it's, it's manifesting itself as the souls begin to live in the divine will. Now, nobody's living a divine life yet. The true life of Jesus and Mary, Louisa possesses it. But she doesn't possess the glorified body yet. There's more that's coming, more that's happening. So where grace uh, of God live, trying to live in the divine will moves the soul to empty herself of all that is human, all the tendencies, all the passions, all the inclinations uh, that, that lead to sin is, is, is going to be gone. Little by little, this is happening with the souls. And Jesus says, what would take you 10 years to do in the human will will take you an hour to do in the divine will. Why? God is doing it. 
Jesus, breathe in my breathing. You take a breath. That's Jesus breathing in your breathing. He takes you at your, at your word. Jesus, beat in my heart beating. Your heart beats. That's Jesus beating in your heart beating. He takes you at your word. And that's, that's the reason why, you know, we say a lot of things, but to this thing, this, this gift of the divine will, when we, when we get in communion with God, I mean, really uh, adoring God, loving God, praising God, thanking God, glorifying God, worshiping God, that's supposed to be our life. Jesus said, I gave the church the Holy Eucharist. Why? So that people can prepare themselves for the perennial communion that Adam had before the fall, where we are going to walk and talk with God in the cool of the evening. This great gift is very close. So Jesus says, on the other hand, to do my divine will is to live with two different wills in such a way that when I, God, give in order to follow me, the creature feels the weight of her own human will, which causes contrasts. And even though they follow the orders of my divine will with faithfulness, this is the saints, they feel the weight of the rebellious nation, nature and of their passions and of their inclinations. How many saints, although they have reached the highest perfection, feel their own human will waging war against them, which keeps them oppressed? You read, you read the you, dark night of the souls that the saints went through. I was going to say, would you think that it's similar to a mystical marriage where the soul is completely united with God, or is that is something different to that? The, the mystical marriage, it's united with God, but they're still here on earth. The divine will is, with the fourth stage of the divine will is to leave earth, enter into the sun, S-U-N of the divine will, and, and be dissolved in one with God. It's like, you're the drop of water that the priest puts in the chalice. Jesus says, you are the nothing that I want you to enter into the all. And then we dive into this infinite ocean of love. So what the saints have gone through, like with the mystical marriage, uh, that's the beginning, okay? Jesus tells Louisa, heaven is the wedding feast. We haven't seen anything yet. What's coming to the earth, what God has planned for the earth, uh, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. It's, a, it's the most glorious time to be alive. And, and that's why everything seems to be falling apart. It's really not falling apart. God is getting everything ready. Ready for what? The kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. So this is what Jesus is doing. So Jesus says, those that are oppressed, even though they've reached the highest perfection, uh, are forced to cry out, who will free me from this body of death? That is from the human of mind that wants to give death to the good that I want to do. So as, as, as this is the quote from Paul, who will free me? And she says, Jesus will. That well, Sanctification is not about being good and holy and saintly. In the divine will, that's volume one through volume 10, how to become a saint. And you must become a saint. To live in the divine will is volume 11 through volume 19, how to live in the divine will through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's God is getting us ready for like the second Pentecost that's coming upon the earth. As John Paul II said, get ready for, uh, get ready for the third millennium. Get ready for the glory of the church, the new springtime of mankind. What we're going through now is difficult, but Jesus says the church must be purified. The world must be purified. Why? He says, this gift is so beautiful that the world isn't ready for it. So what is, what's what Jesus is telling us to get ready for? The third purification. The first purification was the flood. The second purification was the blood of Jesus washing us clean. Now we're going to enter into the third purification, which is fire from heaven. Listen to what our Lady of Akita says. Fire from heaven is coming. Now, what does this mean? It means, it means the sacred heart of Jesus, the immaculate heart of Mary are going to consume the world in love. This God is going to bring us to the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary for all those that want it. And that will be ecstasy. For those that don't want this life, it will be wailing and grinding of teeth. So it depends on where you are. Our lady said it will be good for some, but it's going to be bad for most. Where are we? Is, is our life totally surrendered to, to live this abundant life of, of Jesus and Mary. That's what, try, that's, that's what the divine will is. The divine will is trying to get us ready for what's coming. And this is so glorious. It's so magnificent. So he says, 
to live, Jesus says, to live in my divine will is to live like a son, S-U-S-O-N. To do my divine will would be called, in comparison, living as a servant. In, to live in my divine will, what belongs to the Father belongs to the Son. Then it is well known how servants are forced to make more sacrifices than the sons do. They have to expose themselves to more tiring, more humble services, to the cold, to the heat, to traveling on foot, and the like. In fact, how much did my saints not do, though they were the most beloved friends of mine, Jesus says. But in order to execute the, only the orders of doing my divine will, instead, he says, what, what I've given to Louisa, this is why he calls her the little newborn daughter of the divine will, the, the, the person becomes a son or a daughter and remains with his father and takes care of his father, cheers up his father with his kisses and caresses. He, and he gives orders to the servants as if the father were ordering them. Now you're getting a glimpse of the divine will. God is, he's expanded our capacity to understand God's great love for humanity. So he says, he says, he, if he goes out, the son doesn't travel a walk. He travels in a coach. And while the son possesses all that belongs to the father, the servants are given only the recompense for the work they have done, remaining free to serve their master or not. And if, they do not serve the master. They no longer have the right to receive any further compensation. On the other hand, nobody can remove those intimate relations between a father and a son by which a son possesses the goods of the father. No law, either celestial or terrestrial, can, ex can cancel these rights just as it cannot unbind the sonship between a father and a son. So this intimacy with God is going to be more intense with a divine will than with the saints. How can this be? Well, let's look at let's look at the life of the holy men and women of the Old Testament. You know, Moses, Elijah, you know, King David, none of them received the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. None of them received the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Why? It wasn't time. Now it's the time. If for the last 2,000 years, now is the time for the sacraments and sacramentals. And now Jesus says, now is the time. And this is why Our Lady says this to Bruno in 1947. Time has now come to an end. What's the end? What's ending? It's the, she says, the reign of the evil one. We've been under the thumb of the evil one for 6,000 years. That is coming to an end. So what God has done is he's given us the way and the how the kingdom is going to be established on earth as it is in heaven through Louisa. And as you read the book of heaven, Every question that you have had disappears. It really does. It might not happen the next page, but as you begin to read, you're going, that's what the sacred scriptures meant. That's what the saints meant when they said this or that. So he sees, Jesus says, my daughter, the living in my divine will is the living that is closest to the saints in heaven. That's the life, heaven on earth. May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And it is so distant from the one who simply conforms to my, my will and does my divine will faithfully executing its orders. It's the distance is as much as heaven is earth, heaven is distant from the earth. And as much the distance between a son and a servant, between a king and a subject. Moreover, this is a gift which I, God, want to give in these times that are so sad. And we, we experience this. Every family is going through a, a, a great suffering with all the sin that's in the world. He says, he says, I want to give in these times, which is so sad that they may not only do my divine will, but now possess my divine will. And then he says this, am I not free to give whatever I, God, want to give when I, God, want to give and to whom, God, I want to give? To whom I, God, want to give this to. This is, he's just, see, now is the time for sanctification. The churches, the saints have never taught us how to do sanctification. Why? It wasn't time. The one who is teaching us about sanctification is the newborn, Louisa. That's why, that's why the book of heaven is so amazing as you read it, as you study, as you put it into practice. So is it a master free to say to his servant, 
live in my house, take and eat, command as another myself? Isn't a master free to do that? And so nobody may prevent him from possessing his goods. He legitimizes his servant as his own son. He gives his son the right to possess. And if a rich man can do so, Jesus says, much more, can I, God, do it? So this living in my divine will is the greatest gift that I gift that I want to give to humanity now. It, it wasn't, it wasn't for it. It wasn't when, when I, when I listened to Father Bucci's talk, Father Bucci would say, uh, St. Francis was for his time. St. Teresa was for her time. Luisa is for our time. Luisa La Santa. And as you read her life, as you study her life, uh, and we're going through the titles of Luisa right now, 8,000 titles that, that Jesus gave to Luisa. Who is this Luisa Picaretta? <laughs> Who is she? Where Jesus would say, he, this is, he loves us so much. Now, the thing about this is, what Jesus says to Luisa, he wants to see in us. The titles that Jesus gives to Luisa, these divine attributes of, of God given to Luisa, he wants to give them to us as well. So living in my divine will is the greatest gift that I, God, want to give to humanity. My divine goodness wants to show off more. I want to show more love towards humanity. And since I, God, gave them everything, I, God, want to give them the gift of my divine will so that in possessing the divine will, they may appreciate and love the great good that they possess. Listen to what Jesus says. It, no wonder, no wonder the, the souls that read the divine will are so happy. You, what Jesus is doing is, yes, it's been a last, it's been a tough 2,000 years, and the last few years has been even tougher, but the kingdom is coming. I don't want you to lose that fact, Jesus says. Mm -hmm. So he says, don't be surprised if you see that they don't understand. Don't be just surprised. In order to understand, they have to dispose themselves to the greatest of sacrifices. So Jesus says to us, through Louisa, you're going to experience the martyrdom of martyrdoms. Okay, what is the martyrdom of martyrdoms? It's not giving life to your human will. What, what, what does your human will, how does your human will live? It's worried, it's fearful, it's anxious, it's complaining, it's negative, it's doubting. Jesus says you're going to sacrifice that. The spirit of worry, Jesus said to his apostles, does worry add one moment to your life? And he says, of course it doesn't. And then Jesus says, stop worrying. This is a command from Jesus. Stop worrying. Oh, Father, but you don't understand. I got to worry about my family. Stop worrying. You're, you're, you're insulting Jesus Christ. Is he your God? Is he your Lord? Is he your Savior? What did he say to the apostles? Ask, believe that you have received it, and it is yours. When you... When you say, oh, Lord, give me the grace, instantly you have the grace. Now do it. Oh, you're too lazy to do it? You're too stubborn to do it? No, do it. Lord, I need the grace to be more patient. God says, be patient. And then right there, he's going to give you an example of, are you going to be patient? I've given you the grace. Can you get through this? Or are you going to go back to your miserable human, human will of worry, of fear, of complaining, of negativity? See, if these are all demons, and you feed the demon of worry by keeping the, derm the demon of worry alive, stop feeding them. Starve them out. No more worry. No more fear. Oh, oh, I'm so afraid of this. I'm, Jesus, it says, it's, the scripture says, love casts out all fear. No more fear. No more worry. No more, no more complaining. I thought God gave me the gift of complaining. I was using it as much as I could. <laughs> And the Lord said, stop it. Then, then no more fear, no more anxiety, no more complaints, no more negativity. Get rid of all negative things. Oh, it's sunny today. What do we always hear? But it's going to be raining for a week. Stop it. No more negativity. Be peaceful, be joyful, but be happy. This is what Jesus said to Louisa. If you're peaceful, joyful, and happy, he says, you are anticipating heaven. I am all peace. I am all joy. I am all happiness, Jesus says. But if you're worried, fearful, anxious, complaining, and negative, you are anticipating hell. You're not living a life of heaven. You're living a life of hell, misery. All the demons are around you. 
So Jesus is saying, you're going to go through the greatest of sacrifices. The sacrifices we're going to go through is no more worry. That's it's this Lent that's coming up. Put this down and put this down on, on your mirror in your bathroom, write it. No more worry, no more fear, no more anxiety, no more complaints, no more negativity, no more doubts. Be positive. You're going to find out how negative you are, how miserable you are. Jesus, Jesus wants to free us of this human failure. And when Adam said to God, I'm going to listen to the Lucifer, I will not serve, I will not obey. That's where we've been for 6,000 years. 2,000 years, Jesus redeemed us from Satan. Now Jesus says, now that you've learned how to obey the church, how to be faithful to the church, now you're going to be sanctified. Get ready for what's coming. Yes, there's the, the warning, the, the, the miracle, the three days of darkness, the illumination of conscience, all this is coming. But you got to get ready for it. How? By getting closer to Jesus, closer to Mary. So Jesus says, basically, these souls uh, living in the divine will will feel the possession of mine. They will touch with their own hands what it means to live in my most holy divine will. However, he says, be attentive and do not be bothered by the difficulties that are around you. Don't be bothered by it. Be peaceful, joyful, and happy in all situations. Oh, it, it's going to rain today. Good. Fiat. We need the water. It's going to flood today. Good. Fiat. Things got to be washed away. It's going to be sunny today. Good. Fiat. God, you, you have to enter into this life of joy, of happiness. And, and God's going to test you. You're going to say, let me be patient. And the person that might bother you might be right next to you. And you got to go fiat. <laughs> and, and you got to, yeah, the other thing too is you got to get a sense of humor because God is playing. He's, he's answering your prayer, but he goes, okay, how are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Are you going to be worried, fearful, anxious? So Jesus says, be attentive. Do not be bothered by the difficulties that are around you. Little by little, this is, this is the promise of Jesus. I, God, will make my way to make humanity understand how to live in my most holy divine will. God's going to do it. And all, how? You just keep on reading and God himself will show you. Read some more. God will show you more. This is, this is what's so great. Okay, for the next question. Yes, yes. Okay. Move on to the next question. Um, says, could Father Soso explain the three days of darkness and the new millennium? After the three days of darkness, does the new millennium start immediately? Is the new millennium the thousand years that the book of Revelation talks about? How does it start? Well, it's it's going to happen. How how and why? Who knows? God God's he keeps everything a secret. It's it's like a good father for Christmas. He's not going to tell the kids before Christmas what he bought for them. A good father has this planned, and it's planned by God. Okay, if we are close to God, it's going to be ecstasy. So this is what Jesus says about the three days of darkness to me is basically God saying to the evil one um, whose death, the evil one is just death. Um, he's living dead. That's why he stinks. That's why he's, he smells so bad. He's, and he's screaming all the time. He knows he's living dead. He's chosen this. So the three days of darkness, God basically is going to say to the devil, take what's yours and get out of here. The kingdom is coming. Take all those. Now, he said, basically, I've already got my children ready for the three days of darkness, what they need. And if you don't know what they need, you're not ready. It's, it's, it's that clear. Tell me again what it is. No, you don't know what it is yet. You don't know what to do to pray, prepare for the three days of darkness. Well, then you're going to get what you deserve. This is all about a time of preparing. After the three days, days of darkness, they say it's the new heavens and the new earth. Why? Evil will be gone. With all his, all his associates, they're all going to be gone. What does that mean? The kingdom of God will be on earth as it is in heaven. There'll be no more, what does what scripture say? No more tears, no more sorrow, no more sadness, no more sin, no more death. What's coming is glorious. 
And God is offering this to us to go through. And he's already told us how, what to prepare for. And if you're not prepared for this, I mean, it doesn't matter how many times somebody says it to you, you're not prepared. You're, you're, you, you know, it's, it's going to be a tough time for you. The new, the millennium, I, I, I love it when, when, when I hear somebody, I can't wait for the, the, the thousand year reign. That's the first day. A day will be like a thousand years. A thousand years will be like a day. What God has planned, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. The details, I don't know the details, but what I do know, it's coming. Illumination of conscience. You want to know what the illumination of conscience is? Do you really want to know what the illumination of conscience is? Do you want a quick answer? It's basically the book of heaven. Read the book of heaven and you'll be prepared. Not only prepared, you're going to thank God, praise God, glorify God, worship God for what he has done with Louisa. Your whole life changes when you read the book of heaven. There's no fear. There's no anxiety. There's no complaints. There's no negativity to the point of one day there will be no more sin. And, and, and God is allowing us to witness the greatest miracle that he's going to do. He says, the miracles of the saints are miracles. He says, but I, God, am going to bring about the miracle of miracles for my children. What is that? That's to go back to where Adam was before the fall. The most glorious time to be alive. 5, 15, 7, 20, 19, 21, Jesus, Jesus says, when my love will make the era of my divine will arise, the new era of maximum benefit towards humanity. And he says, then the oceans, the seas, the rivers of my divine will, this is how he's talking about his divine will, will overflow the earth. This is the consuming love of God with its gigantic waves will come out and overwhelm humanity and everything back into my divine will. Everything's coming back to what God wanted before the fall. And he's showing us how and why this is going to happen. And he wants us prepared. He's not going to surprise us with not being prepared. He's going to surprise us, <laughs> but he's not going to surprise us of, of not telling us what's coming. And that's why he gave Louisa the book of heaven, but no longer hidden. Rather, the roaring waves will make themselves seen by everyone and everyone will touch everything that God has created. And those who want to resist this current, this, this flow of divine will will risk the, the, the losing their own lives. It's, it's going to be tough and God has to give everybody what they want. He has to give the devil what he wants. He gave the devil hell. The devil wanted to destroy the church. He wanted 100 years. God gave him 100 years. This new and divine way of holiness is very, very, very close. This new and divine way of holiness, God wants us to get ready for a new way. A, a, he wants to breathe in us the rule of God, the breath of God, as, he, as, he, as, the, as the Holy Spirit breathed into the dust. What came out of the dust was the image and likeness of God. And he says to Louisa, Louisa, now is the time for my children to return to what I wanted from the beginning. What, what came out of the dust, the image and likeness of God? That's what he wants for us. He wants us to return to what he has originally planned. Why do you think everything's falling apart? The kingdom's coming. This is a glorious time to be alive. Glorious time to be alive. Okay, third question. So, Father, um, we've only got a couple of minutes before the okay. Zoom runs out, but um, we can start with the third question. It's about the second coming. How does the second coming fit in into the new millennium and the era of peace and so on? Okay. Um, okay. The second coming of Christ, this year, there's three comings of Christ. This is what St. Bernard said. Um, it's threefold. The third coming is between the other two. Okay, the first coming was what at the incarnation. Okay, the last coming is when when all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The middle coming is where we are right now. Okay, so this middle coming. Uh, so let's let's talk about the last coming. Uh, everyone will look upon Jesus, whom they have pierced, and in the middle in the middle coming, the hidden coming, only the chosen shall see him, and they will see him 
within themselves to, so that their, their souls are saved. The first coming was in the flesh and in weakness. The middle coming, this is what we're getting ready for, is in the spirit and power of God. The final coming will be in the glory and majesty of God. This middle coming is like a road that leads from the first coming to the last. The first, Christ was our redemption. The last will be the manifestation, Jesus as a manifestation of our lives in Christ. But the middle is the way uh, God is our rest. God is our consolation. This is why we spend time in front of the Blessed Sacrament. We spend time in front of the Blessed Sacrament to be consoled, to rest in God. And, and to begin to understand this great gift of the divine will. So it seems that this middle coming is the great gift of the most holy divine will. This is what God has given to us. This is where we are. This is why, you know, if you, if you have a shanty and God gives you a million dollars, you tear down the shanty, you build a mansion. This is where we are. We're getting rid of the old and bringing in the new. What's the old? It's, it's just not only doing the will of God, being good and holy and saintly, but now, as St. Saint, uh, uh, Peter says in his epistle, we want to share in divinity. You are called, Jesus says, St. Peter says, to be divinized, not to become God, but to share in this divinity that Christ wants to give. Um, if you think that I am inventing what I am saying about the middle coming, listen to the Lord himself. If anyone loves me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come to him. Uh, whoever loves me and keeps his words, Jesus says, uh, we love him and his words in sacred scripture tell us come to me. So these are where are these words to be kept in your heart. Okay. They're hidden in our heart. Uh, blessed are they who keep it. Jesus shows us. So let us penetrate deep into the core of our soul. Let these words flow into us, uh, into our feelings, that we may, uh, and the way we behave, to feed our soul well. So we, we have the, our daily bread, uh, the, the third bread. We have the second bread, the super substantial bread of the Holy Eucharist uh, that God gives us every day if we wish. And now Jesus is saying, I'm going to feed you with the first bread the bread of the divine will that I fed Adam with, that Jesus and Mary lived on, this, this living in the divine will. So he says, uh, so your hearts won't dry up. So he says, if you keep God's word by being faithful and Catholic, uh, uh, it is no doubt that it will keep you. For the son will come to you with the father and will come to you and renew you as the one uh, who makes all things new. For this was the middle coming, and this is where we are today. Uh, and just have we been shaped by the earthly image, we're now going to be shaped in the heavenly image. This, this gift of gifts slowly changes us. And you, all I can tell you is you're not the same person that you were. You, you can't be. As when Jesus speaks, the word dictated to Louisa, these words that really it literally change you. He says... Out of all the books that are on the earth, this is the only book that Jesus named the book of heaven that can change you. So as Adam was formed into man and in God's image and likeness, so humanity, redeemed by Christ, is now the sanctification that's coming. And now this, this image and likeness of God is being given to us. So through holy baptism, we are in God's image. And now with the likeness of God, as we read the book of heaven, study the book of heaven, we learn to practice how to live this. That's all. Uh, it's all found in the in the book of heaven. So, the first coming of Christ was in His holy humanity. The second coming of Christ is the Eucharistic reign of Christ, where Jesus says, "I want to make you my living hosts, that souls will dwell in the divine manner in His kingdom on earth as it is in heaven." And then, then there's the third coming of Christ, the final judgment. So the middle coming of Christ is what St. Saint, Saint Bernard talked about, but he didn't know what it was. He, he didn't know the fullness that God had planned for, for this time. So it's a, there's three comings of Christ, not just two. And Father, do you, can you explain to us what is meant by a new heaven and new earth? Is that the same as this era of peace that's coming, or is it something after, 
after the final judgment? Well, see, Jesus says creation isn't completed. Um, the earth has been polluted. Uh, the earth, everything's going to be changed. What, what's coming is a new heavens and a new earth, uh, a, a new body. We're going to have a body that will not die. This body right now is food for worms. It's, it can't endure the divine will. It, no human can, as a matter of fact, Jesus got the glorified body and went to heaven. Mary got the glorified body and went to heaven. He ascended, she assumed into heaven. Louisa went to heaven, but she hasn't got the glorified body yet. This, what God has planned for humanity, the, he says to Louisa, it, the world's gonna shake. And I think it's gonna shake with those who are jumping up and down in, in ecstasy and those that are jumping up and down, wailing and grinding their teeth, knowing that they've chosen, they didn't chose heaven. They chose hell. So they had new heavens and a new earth. No eye has seen, no air has heard. I, I, re, I, really, I like to watch the um, uh, uh, near-death experiences. And I like to listen to what they saw. They saw colors that they've never seen before. They saw, they listened to sounds that they never heard before. They were smells that were heavenly fragrance that they've never smelled on earth. What's coming is that it's, it's, it's way, way beyond. See, this is, this is a fallen earth. This is, this is a bus station for me. I'm waiting to get the ticket to get on the bus, to go back to heaven. That's, that's where we belong. We belong back in heaven, but heaven is coming to earth. So the way earth is right now, that's why the fire is coming. Everything's going to be purged. Everything's going to be beautiful uh, coming out of the ashes. It's going to be a new beginning, a new heaven and a new earth. Father, we have a question about the sufferings that we're enduring now or our past sufferings. What does yeah. it mean to offer, offer them up in the divine will? Um, are we able to offer up? Obviously, we're able to offer up our current sufferings. Are we able to offer our past sufferings? Can you explain that a bit? Sure, sure. Uh, what number was that? <laughs> Let me That's just look at the question answer. number four. 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 Okay. Oh, 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 did I go past that? Okay. 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 Volume 12, July 7th, 1917. Uh, for the soul who lives in the divine will, everything is present. So Louisa says, I was fusing myself in my sweet Jesus. Now, fusing is the term that Jesus is asking us to do with him. It's like welding two pieces together. He, he doesn't, he never wants us to be separated from him. We, he wants us to learn how to fuse. And this is one of the things by reading the book of heaven that you can begin to do in your prayer life, fusing yourself with Jesus, want being one with God. You know, it, it, it's, it's, so, it's the most beautiful thing that you could, could imagine. So she says, I was fusing myself in my sweet Jesus, but I saw myself as so meager that I didn't know what to give him. We have nothing. We, we don't even have a drum to give to our God. And they always love the Jesus. That's why I love the little drummer. Boy, I, I don't even have a drum. We have nothing to give him. And my always love of Jesus can, to console me, told me, my daughter, for the one who does my divine will and basically lives in my divine will, this is what he's teaching, Louisa, there is no past, there is no future, but everything is, in, is present in act. Okay, so we have to understand there's no time or space in the divine will. That's why the gift of bilocation is given to the little children in the divine will. That's what Jesus says. That's, that's the gift I give to my children, the gift of bilocation. It's not the bilocation of the saints. It's where Jesus wants to take you. He'll take you to Bethlehem. He'll take you to Cana. He'll take you to Capernaum. He'll take you to Jerusalem. He, he loves you. And, and so uh, there's no past future, everything is present. There's no time or space in the divine will. And you're going to enter into this. And that's why you need a spiritual director because the evil one is going to try to scare you. He's going to try to freak you out. But if you have a spiritual director where you, the, the, your director will tell you, basically, it should be a priest, tell you how to live this life. I mean, it's that that's the reason I think the priest is ontological, ontologically changed. It's, 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 Humans have an understanding. I listen to a lot of good people talk and I go, oh, that's, not, that's not the divine will. You're talking saintly things, good things, holy things. The divine will 
is the new heavens and the new earth, which you were just talking about. Okay, so he says, and just as I, everything I, Jesus, did, I, Jesus, suffered, is all present in act in such a way that if I want to give satisfaction to the Father or good to a creature, he says, I, Jesus, could do it as if in act I were suffering and operating. In the same way, humanity who suffers can do in my divine will, which is already identified with my pains and my works, and they become one. So your suffering that you've gone through already, I mean, I, I, I today, after reading this, I, I, was, I went back to some tough suffering that I went through, physical suffering, and I said, you know, I never gave this to you, Lord. I want to suffer in your, I want to suffer one with your suffering, okay? As the, as the soul does this, he says, my divine will is already identified with my pains, with my works, and they become one. So when a soul wants to give me uh, this, this great amount of love back to me with her pains, her past pains, she can take the pains that she suffered at other times, which are still in act, and give them to me in order to replicate her love and her satisfactions for me. Your sufferings are one with Jesus crucified. He is the one who suffered the most. He already died for you. When you when you come to the point of death, it's going to be easier for you than without Jesus. He died for you already. He took your place already. It will be easier for you to die because of what Jesus went through. Death wears your sting. It's it's so it's it's tough for us who who remain watching our friends our family die. But for, for us who die, re, watch the near-death experiences. It's, it's, this is more real than, than this earth. Uh, a friend of mine died. Uh, she, was, she, was, um, she had a brain hemorrhage, brain, brain aneurysm. And um, we went and touched her with a relic of Louisa on the side of her head. And uh, uh, she, nothing happened. So we went, we prayed to Louisa, we prayed for her healing. And the doctor said, there's, there's no hope. There's no hope. And then we left the next day. She's sitting up in bed. So we go back and she says, she says, all of a sudden, she says, I was, I was, there was my dead grandmother cooking and there was my mother, you know, cleaning. And there was my father whittling. And then these two little girls come running up to her and they said, Eileen, Eileen, are you going to stay? And she knew that they were her sisters. These were the miscarriages that her mother had. She knew them. And, and, she, and, and she said to her dad, <laughs> this, is, this is the funny part, can I stay? And Jesus says, you're going to have to ask your mother. So she went to her mother and she says, mom, can I stay? She says she was always afraid of death. She says, but the colors, everything there is so beautiful. She says, I'm not afraid of death anymore she said she said mom can i stay and she says no honey you got to go back and she said well can i see jesus and she said no if you see jesus you're going to have to stay he wants you to go back <laughs> and she touched her head right where we put the medal of louisa and said you have to go back and then then she was back in in her bed and um, suffering but she says heaven is so beautiful she says heaven is so beautiful so good things are coming uh, amazing things are going to happen. So we can go back with our pains, all the pains that you've gone through, physical, spiritual, mental, emotional sufferings that you've gone through and say, Jesus, I want to go through these pains with you. I want to honor you. I want to praise you. I want to, want to thank you for you taking on yourself all that I went through. And Jesus says, uh, and I, in seeing the industriousness of that soul who places her suffering her acts as though in a bank in order to multiply them, to collect interest, I, Jesus, give more love and more satisfaction to that soul to enrich her more. So yes, your sufferings that you've gone through, physical, spiritual, mental, emotional sufferings, go with them with Jesus. He's already done this for you. And, he, and when you go back, he, he says, you're multiplying the I love yous to Jesus. He says, and I will give her my pains, my works multiplied to give her love and to be loved. See, it's, it's 
this this love of Jesus is is through suffering. He's loved he's loved us so much that he shed every drop of blood. He died on the cross for us. And and when we go through something, we have to recognize Jesus was there with us, suffering all that we suffered, physical, spiritual, mental, emotional. Yes, it's important to go through your past life, one with Jesus, to thank him, to praise him, to, to glorify him, to worship him. As a matter of fact, when we get to heaven, we're going to realize what, how important suffering is. And the first thing we're going to say, when Jesus shows us the suffering that you've gone through, look what it accomplished. Okay, one with me, Jesus says, and, and his mother always with Mary. He says, we will immediately want to go back to earth to suffer. And Jesus will say to us, I've already given that opportunity. So let's go back to all the suffering where we were maybe not the nicest people in the world uh, and repair and redo in the name of everyone and everything past, present, and future. This is the thing that's so beautiful that God is showing us. Yes, suffering with Jesus. How, how do we offer these um, sufferings in the divine will? Is there a formula or is there an it's, it's, act it's of the form tension? There's, there's really no formula. It's how do you live in the divine will? What is, how, how much do you love Jesus? The formula is your heart. How much do you love him? How much do you want for him? How much do you want to die to your ego and your will? How much do you want to die to worry, fear, anxiety, complaints, negativity, and sin? Let's think of all the times you complained. Not, not you personally, but all the times that we've complained. I've complained. I mean, I, I've got to apologize to the Lord. Lord, I'm so sorry. There was no need to complain. There was no need to be worried. I, I, I want to repair, not only for me, but for all of humanity, past, present, and future. See, Moses stood in the breach to... Uh, uh, save the Hebrews. Jesus says to Louisa, Louisa, would you stand in the breach to save humanity, all of my children? They're all on the edge of the abyss. I've done everything for them. And they're on the edge of the abyss. Would you, would you stand in their place and pray? So when we pray in the divine will, God hears all of humanity, past, present, and future, all of humanity praying with our voice adoring God and loving God and praising God as if everyone was praying. And, and Jesus says all, you'll hear at the end, what Jesus has planned. He's planned for the, the, the catch of the day. Every day he's planning to bring us back into his kingdom. He says, I don't want to lose one person. And would you help me? And, and that brings stand? us to the, that's, basically answering our last, our seventh question. We've got two more after it, but like our seventh question is how do we help to save souls in the divine will? And also about question of hell. Um, and that's been up on social media for a lot, for the last couple of weeks about souls. How many souls go to hell? Most souls or some right, souls right. or many souls. <laughs> so maybe we could talk about that now as well. Okay. We could do that right now. Okay. That's, that's from volume 35. Oh, you're going to love this. You're going to love what Jesus is going to share with you. It's so amazing. Volume 35, 322, 1938. Now, Jesus talks, the death, he says, is the stripping of the illusion. So he says, now at that moment of the stripping of the illusion, this is the illusion. This is the illusion. St. Saint, Saint Thomas Aquinas said, if the veil was lifted, if we really could see what's going on, we would see that we're standing in front of the throne of God with our glorified bodies worshiping God eternally. That's where we really are. Where we are now is we're getting through time and we're going to be stripped of this illusion and in seeing and touching with our own hands how much we, we try on God have loved humanity and do love humanity. Humanity will feel such sorrow, this is at the moment of death, that they will repent for not having loved us. We're going to see God as, as he is. We're going to see holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth. And they will recognize our most holy divine will as the origin and the completion of their lives. We're going to all experience this at the moment of death. And as satisfaction, listen to this, those souls will accept death to fulfill one act 
of our divine will. And in fact, he says, you must know that if the creature did not do even one act of the will of God, the doors of heaven would not be opened and the soul would not be recognized as the heiress of the celestial fatherland. That, that's volume, that's volume uh, 20 through volume 36, how to receive the divine inheritance of the father. This is, this is, God's got such great plans for his children. The angels and the saints will not be able to admit that soul into their kingdom if they not, not even do one act, nor would the soul want to enter because the soul would recognize that it does not belong in heaven. Heaven does not belong to us. That's So hence, Jesus says, without our divine will, there is no true sanctity. There is no salvation. So how many are saved by the virtues of the sign of ours, all of love, with the exception, uh, listen to what he says, how many are saved? They're going to recognize God and say, I'm sorry. I, I want, I'll even die now because I want to be with you. That, that's what the, the near-death experiences say to me. It just shows us how much we should be loving God. So he says, there's, he says very, very clearly, um, um, without our divine will, there's no true sanctity, there's no salvation. How many souls are saved by this sign of ours at the, this moment of death? He says, with the exception of those souls who are most perverted, most obstinate, although it would be necessary for them to go through the long path of purgatory. So the moment of death is our daily catch in finding the lost man. The moment of death is our daily catch. This is, you know, all, all, our, all of our friends who died during COVID, they're going to thank God that they died. They're going to praise God that they died. Why? What's coming is going to be tough and it's going to be a little more difficult. And they're going to know that they were, were really brought to, brought to eternity uh, so that they didn't have to experience what's coming. It's going to be tough. I'm not going to say it's not. But she, then Jesus said this, Louisa, the moment of death is the hour of illusion. In that moment, all things present themselves one after another. And they say to that soul, goodbye, the earth has ended for you. Now, be, now begins eternity for you. The near-death experience shows us this. Goodbye to the earth. It's, got, it's over for you. Now eternity is here for you. It happens that when, as the creature, when she is locked inside a room and someone says to her behind a room, there's another room and there is God and there is paradise and there is purgatory and there is hell and some eternity. But the soul says, I don't see any of this. She hears what's being asserted. Since I, since those who speak up about them can't either see them, can't see them either. And they can't speak in a way that's almost not, they speak in a way that's almost not credible, not giving great importance and making their words believed as a reality, as something that is certain. Now, one day the wall falls down and the soul can see with her own eyes what they have told her before. This is what the saints, the saints have gotten us ready. They've gotten us ready. And we look at humanity. It's far worse than it's ever been. When that wall goes down, we're going to see God. We're going to see the Father who has loved us with such great love. And one by one, she sees the benefits that God has done for her and how she, that soul, has broken all the rights of love that she owed to God. She sees that her life belonged to God, not to herself. Everything passes before her. Eternity, paradise, purgatory, hell. The earth runs away from her and her pleasures turn their back on her. Everything disappears. The only thing that remains present to her is that room whose walls have fallen down and that is eternity. What a change for that poor creature. Not ready for it. God wants us to get ready. What's about the three days of darkness? If you don't know what's what's coming, if you don't, if you're not prepared for that three days of darkness, who's going to prepare you? I can't. 
You, this is a time of turning to God. And what God has done with this book of heaven, this diary of Louisa, what he has done is he's presented to us the, the, a new and divine way of holiness that John Paul II prophesied about at the canonization of St. Honorable de Francia. This is, this is the most glorious time to ever live. It is the greatest time that to ever live. He, Jesus says this, my goodness is such that I want everyone to be saved. I allow the falling of these walls when the creature finds himself between life and death. At that moment in which the soul exits the body to enter into eternity so that they may at least have one act of contrition, one act of sorrow for how they've lived and love for me. And recognizing my adorable will over them, Jesus says, I can say I give them one hour of truth now and at the hour of our death. One hour of truth with them in order to rescue them. Oh, if all knew my industries of love, which I, Jesus, perform at the last moment of their lives so that they might not escape from my hands that are more than paternal, they would not wait for that moment, but they would love me all of their lives. And that's what the divine will is. The divine will is to repair your life, redo your life all the all the 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 sin in your life to repair it to redo it why to to love god in in what has happened in the past to love god for what's coming in the future to love him and honor him and cherish him that's why jesus calls heaven the wedding feast this great it's a great time to be alive and all I can say is I, I've read the lives of the saints. I love the lives of the saints. I, I've got enough relics to put almost, I said this once before, put a body off, almost together. But what we have is we have the book of heaven. And it's not about doing the will of God that the saints have taught us about. But it's about living in the will of God, the way Jesus lived, the way Mary did. The interior life of Jesus, the interior life of Mary, which they gave to Louisa. This, this is the most glorious time in the history of the world to be alive. It's greater than the time of Adam. Why? Adam failed. And what happens? Jesus comes as the new Adam. Mary comes as the new Eve. And now 2,000 years later, now they have the newborn, the firstborn of the divine will. And Jesus says, everything's going to change. He says, the destiny of the world, I've breathed into you, Louisa. So humanity now can go back to where we were from the beginning to be in God's image and likeness. And little by little, nobody's there. Nobody's there fully. But there's, there's, let's just put it this way. The doors of the kingdom are closed. Okay? Okay. Peter has the keys. He's going to unlock the doors. All that we can see, the light that we can see right now is under the crack of the door. It's the reflection of the light behind the door in heaven. What God has got his plan for, what he's planned us to be, he wants us to be ready so when those doors open, when the kingdom of God is on earth as it is in heaven, when glory is here, he's asked us to be alive at this time. This is, this is the most glorious time to be alive. It's nothing to be afraid of what's coming. It's, we have to go through this. We have to be pure, purified, purged of, of worry, fear, anxiety, complaints, negativity, negativity, and sin. And if we can get rid of it now, it's going to be ecstasy. That's what God has planned for us. Now and at the hour of our death, it's going to be a glorious time. Watch near-death experiences Get into it. I mean, really get ready for where God's got you. He's planned this from eternity. No one, no one before our time had the opportunity of witnessing people coming back from the dead and telling us heaven is true. God is true. Get ready. Get ready. For, oh, that's one more thing. 
got his her, Eileen's mother said to her, tell your brothers to go back to church because they're, how did she say, go back to church? Cause they're basically that you're, you're, you're in trouble. You got to get back to church. And then she said, why, you know, I mean, you know, how, what, what, what's the reason? What, what she says, because Jesus said he's coming back shortly. That was, that was 14 years ago. He's coming back shortly. He's it's real close. <laughs> it's real close. And it's nothing to be afraid of. It's to get ready for be in the state of grace, you know, spend time in front of the blessed sacrament, adore God and love God and praise God, fall in love with our Eucharistic Lord. Look at him in the monstrance. Don't sit there reading a book, fall in love with God. Yes. This is the greatest time to be alive. And if your church doesn't have it, you could go to the internet. And you can download um, uh, perpetual adoration somewhere in the world. Go to a different church. Go to go visit Jesus. The thirty-three visits that he asked Louisa to do every day. Go to where you were baptized. Go to where you were confirmed. Go to where you were married. Go to where you were ordained. Go back and and fall in love with God. It's the greatest time in the world to live. It's it's the most powerful time, and it's not to be afraid. It's to get ready. Be prepared. Get ready for what God is going to do because it's it's close. Amen. Oh, Thank you, Father Celso. That was amazing. Very powerful. God bless you. Um, just want to. I just want to bring up. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I've I've recently discovered your um, Louisa Fiat or Fiat Louisa. Sorry, on Audible. So. That's just totally for free. So for anyone that wants to listen to the um, Book of Heaven, all the volumes are there. I know that that's part of your um, your work, Father Sosa, the book, uh, Fiat Luisa. Is that correct? Well, there's there's, there's those that <laughs> are so generous in doing that. And they, you know, they, God bless them. God bless what they're yeah, doing. So I'm, I'm finding it very helpful to listen to it on Audible. So it's yeah. just Fiat Louise if, if you want to look that up. And all the, the complete volumes, 36 volumes, yes. are on are for free to listen to and it's recorded on um, Audible. So look that up if you find it easier to listen to. I find it very powerful. So thank you again for all your powerful works and words. And maybe we could finish off with the blessing. Sure, sure. Great. Uh, may the blood that flowed upon the wood of this cross free us from our human will that we live in God's holy divine will always. We ask this in Jesus' name, under the mantle of Mary, through the intercession of little Louisa, and we pray for divine healing for our families, all our loved ones, for all those in the holy divine will. We pray that this becomes God's command in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.